Good morning students, this is your Dandabani going to continue the fourth unit of environmental science and engineering. In our last video we seen about the importance of sustainable development and the energy demanding needs of uh, urbanization. To the continuation of that, today we are going to see about water conservation. Before I am starting the uh, topic, I need your fullest attention because I am going uh, you to explain the nuts and shells of the entire topic. It was quite interesting and we are facing a lot of water scarcity problems nowadays. So, uh, I am hoping that this topic will insight, give some insight about the conservation of water. So, what is water conservation? It is nothing but a process of saving water for our future and current utilization is known as water conservation. Of course, we are facing a lot of problems uh, in the demand of water. Why we need to conserve water? Though we are having a vast amount of water resources, but the quality of water is not up to the mark. We know that the fresh water and the purest form of water is the rain water. Even though with the increase in population and erratic agricultural activities, the quality and quantity of water have been declined very frequently. So, we are in a position to conserve the water and our better lifestyles also require more amount of fresh water. As the population increases, the need of water also and the requirement of water also more. So, if the less rainfall the average rainfall get reduced means the groundwater table cannot be recharged up to the mark. So, it will also uh, gives us the uh, point of view to conserve more amount of water. The over exploitation of groundwater leads to drift. If once drift is came means and it also rapidly causes the famine. So, we have we are in the need to conserve the water to avoid the famine and our modern agricultural practices and industrial activities require more fresh water. So, we are in the position to conserve utmost level of water. Here are some strategies to conserve the water and I am quoting that six strategies. I will explain one by one. Uh, please uh, make your attention. Fine. First one is reducing evaporation loss. We know that in the humid regions, uh, the evaporation rate of evaporation will be more high. To conserve the water, to reduce the evaporation loss, we have to place a horizontal barrier below the surface of the soil so that the rate of evaporation has been reduced. Second one is reducing irrigation losses. The water losses during the irrigation can be reduced by using the sprinkling irrigation, drip irrigation and by the use of hybrid crops. During while we are using the sprinkling and drip irrigation, uh, we can conserve the water up to 30 to 40 percentage. So, it will conserve the more amount of water and also, also the hybrid crops also require less amount of water. And third one is a reuse of water. Even the used water can be reused for fatty irrigation and the grey water from washings, the domestic waste water should be used for gardens and car washing etc. So that we can reuse the used water again and again. And the fourth one is preventing wastage of water. The wastage of water can be prevented by closing the taps properly, repairing the leakages instantly and using the small capacity taps, we can prevent the wastage of water. And the fifth one, decreasing runoff losses. So, the runoff of most of the soils can be reduced by allowing the most amount of water to infiltrate to the soil. This can be achieved by the contour cultivation and terrace farming. So, that the more amount of water has been infiltrated to the soil, it can enrich the nutrients present in the soil too. And the last one is avoid discharge of sewage. So, if we are discharging the sewage to the natural water bodies, eventually it gets polluted. So, the prevention has, uh, has to be monitored. So, the discharge of sewage to the natural water bodies must be prevented as much as possible. Next, methods of water conservation. We are having, we are going to discuss about the two methods of water conservation. One is rainwater harvesting and another one is watershed management. First, we are going to see about rainwater harvesting. This is the method we are using in our day to day life. Even we are house also having the rainwater harvesting. Our colleges are having the rainwater harvesting. Our government offices are having the rainwater harvesting. Even the industries are having the rainwater harvesting. Why we all using this rainwater harvesting? Let we see about this. So, the rainwater harvesting is a technique of capturing and storing of rainwater for future utilization. Yes, of course, if we capture the more amount of uh, water during the storms or rainy season, we can store it and we can reuse and we can utilize it for further purposes. 
so that during the rainy season if we store more amount of water and if we raise the ground water table means we can utilize it during the summer regions so the picture explains you how the rain water has been collected through pipelines and it has been collected in the collection tank the objectives of rain water harvesting of course to meet the increasing demand of water and second one to recharge and raise the ground water table by means of collecting more amount of water the ground water table has been annually get raised to reduce the ground water contamination so these are the objectives of rain water harvesting and to reduce the surface runoff loss and to minimize the water crisis and water conflicts we know that the states and states uh, our neighboring state has a fight between the water sharing disputes because the more conflicts between the states and countries too so the india position in the groundwater level the average rainfall is uh, 350 to 600 mm and the concentrated only in the months of june to november so there is only little vegetation to check the runoff and allow infiltration so nowadays the india's groundwater is not on the very good state so the annual recharge rate is lesser than the consumption so we have to be very careful next india position in groundwater level as well as as that we stated earlier because the annual discharge rate exceeds the annual recharge rate it's because of the percolation proof of concrete roads and buildings nowadays the urbanized areas we are having more number of buildings more number of industries more number of roads there will be no possibilities the water get percolates into the soil it entirely get run off to the nearby seashore or the water reservoir so the groundwater level has been depleted the concept of rainwater is harvesting it involves the collecting water that falls on our house roof it will be explained in the current slide the rooftop rainwater harvesting method is a normal and it is a most useful method for our residential purposes the picture shows that during the rainfall the rainwater gets uh, collected on the top of our roof so it gets drained towards the gravity and it the water has been passed over to the pipelines to two storage tanks one is recharge pit another one is dug well if the water has been collected in the recharge pit uh, in course of time we can use it through manual pumping and we can utilize the water for our current usage even if we are not utilize the water means it can be passed over to the dug well the more amount of water has been passed over to dug well by means of this in course of a time the groundwater level has been raised a quite interesting thing uh, the recharge pit consists of sands and gravels it will act as a sand filter so we are using the natural filter to have the pump the water in the from the recharge pit so once the rainwater has been collected through two diversions one through recharge pit and another one to dug well we can utilize the water in a current situation and we can able to recharge the groundwater level it is a quite interesting thing of the rainwater harvesting so by means of this process if every individual if every industry if every educational institution utilizing this method means we can improve uh, we can raise the groundwater as a whole so that we can able to conserve more amount of water what are the advantages of rainwater harvesting the electricity consumption in pumping of water second one mitigating the effects of drafts if we conserve if we store more amount of water we can avoid the drafts the increasing of availability of water during the rainy season if more amount of water passed over to the ground means we can raise the groundwater table if the groundwater table raised means we can minimize the soil erosion and the future generation is assured of water i am explaining the three concepts of government actions in the state of tamil nadu the rainwater harvesting is a compulsory for every buildings to avoid the groundwater repletion as yes, we know that in every home we are having the rainwater system in every institution we are having the rainwater system in every government offices we are having the rainwater system in rajasthan the peoples in the thar desert having the traditional practice of rainwater harvesting because they are knowing well about the drafts to avoid the drafts they are going to conserve they are going to store more amount of water it is a traditional practice in rajasthan at present in pune rainwater harvesting is a compulsory for any new society to be registered see the picture it explains if we turn the umbrella we can able to store more amount of water by passing it over the tank we can give it to someone else okay fine 
now we are going to the second method of water conservation uh, watershed management the watershed consists of two words one is water another one is shed if the shed is nothing but it's a collected uh, collection of place uh, sorry the place should be collected by something so the land area from which water drains under the natural process called the gravity into a stream lake reservoir other water bodies is known as watershed and the watershed management the management of annual rainfall and the annual rainfall resultant runoff is called watershed management is yes, of course due to the gravity the water has been drained and collected to the nearby water reservoir or surface of the water so how we are managing the rainfall and how we collecting the resultant runoff water and how we are managing the things is known as watershed management so the factors affecting watershed the watersheds are found to be degraded of course due to several process i will quote uh, two process because if the watershed are found to be degraded it's because of uncontrolled manner the watershed has been maintained and unplanned manner the watersheds are maintained and unscientific land use of activities will degrade the natural watersheds second one overgrazing and mining activities degrade the watershed so we have the proper mining system uh, to avoid the depletion of watershed and the drafty climates also affect the watershed here we quote an example the depletion of uh, water resources due to the damage of reservoirs irrigation system and the misuse of slopes of the mountain now the himalayan regions water regions are in the very threatened situation so to avoid that we have to maintain and we have to uh, conserve the watersheds so that we can able to generate more amount of hydroelectric power uh, can be harnessed from himalayan watersheds only if proper control measures are taken okay fine next adjectives of watershed to minimize the risk of floods and drifts if we are managing the watershed properly means we can avoid the flood if we are managing the watershed properly means we can avoid the drift so these two natural disasters have been avoided and its risk also has been minimized to improve the economical status of rural regions and second one to manage the watershed for the developmental activities and for the employment opportunities fourth one to protect the soil erosion due to surface uh, runoff and fifth one to promote the forestry and horticultural activity on all suitable areas of land and last one to raise the groundwater table yes the watershed management techniques we are having four techniques and i'll giving the each uh, technique the picture picture uh, examples first one trenches trenches are nothing but we have to dug the land surface at equal intervals so that during the rainfall the water get deposited on that uh, ducts uh, interval equal intervals so it improves the ground water storage in our national uh, 100 day working schemes of indira gandhi uh, mahatma gandhi employment scheme we can see in our local village itself the people who are working in the scheme they are making trenches which makes the water storage capacity uh, in some more amount second one earthen dams Uh, in the catchment areas the civil structure uh, structures are constructed uh, to check the run of water so that we can able to store more amount of water the proper management of resultant run of is occur in this third one farm pond uh, the constructed to improve water storage capacity of the catchment area the farm pond can to build to improve the uh, water storage capacity fourth one underground barriers underground barriers should be built along the nullahs to raise the water table it, it is a concrete structured uh, passage of water to makes a proper uh, uh, way to settle on a nearby reservoir or lakes or streams or rivers these four techniques are the watershed management techniques next we are going to see about the components of watershed we are having six components first one is water harvesting of course the proper storage of water in watershed can be used in low rainfall areas if the low rain, rainfall areas has utilized has stored the water during the rainfall time means we can utilize the uh, low amount of water in a proper way so that the components of watershed uh, first place has been covered by water harvesting second one is agroforestry it prevents 
the soil erosion and by means of that preventing soil erosion it retains the moisture content in soil in high rainfall areas the woody trees are grown in between the crops you can see that picture there will be some woody trees in the proper intervals of uh, uh, the land to reduce the rainfall and it also retains a more amount of nutrients in the soil third one reducing soil erosion uh, terracing bunding contour cropping strip cropping are used to minimize the soil erosion and runoff of the slopes of the watershed so these contour cropping this terracing will uh, reduce the soil erosion so that the nutrient rich content will present in the each uh, stages of that uh, contour cropping fourth one scientific mining due to improper mining the stability of hills get disturbed resulting landslide and soil erosion to avoid that the planting we have to plant the soil binding plants in contour trenching at an interval of 1 meter on over burden dumped in the mined area so that it minimize the destructive effects of mining in watershed areas so we have a scientific mining approach fifth one public participation the people's cooperation and participation is essential in watershed management especially for protecting a freshly planted area and maintaining a water harvesting structure implemented by the government so that the public uh, participation enforces and uh, make a com uh, and will be the component of a watershed management sixth one minimizing livestock population if the livestock population present in the surrounding villages of watershed then the watershed should be reduced because the debris and wastes of the livestock due to the surface runoff it reaches the watershed very shortly so it pollutes the watershed more uh, fastly so the watershed has been reduced in the nearby livestock population areas these six components are the watershed management components uh, so in from this two topics one is water rain water harvesting and another one is uh, watershed management we get an insight about how the water has been conserved in our home itself and another topic watershed management uh, states that how the water conserves and stored in our village in our town in our state it's uh, in such a way so one is from our our side we can store water in our home by rain water harvesting another one is by the state level how the management of rainfall and the resultant runoff has been monitored and stored in watersheds these two concepts will describe how the importance of water and how can we conserve more amount of water and how can we raise the ground water table and how can we avoid the water pollution so this topic will be quite interesting i think mm, hope some uh, insights you got from these two topics and we will uh, listen uh, going to see the next interesting topic thanks for listening uh, thanks for your patience thank you so much